Accenture interview question which were asked to one of our subscriber and they have shared those questions with me and I'm going to demonstrate the same in this specific video. So let's get started. So the first question was, okay, let me start with the first question. The first question states that while creating a record, I want to set the last created date as two years ago or I want to set the created date as two years ago. Can I do that? And if yes, then how can I do that? Okay, so basically, when we are going to create a record in Salesforce, of course, when we create a record in Salesforce, let's say if I'm going to create any accounts. So if I'm going to go ahead and create any account, and surely we know that, let me click on small scale, and we surely know that we cannot update the created by or created date or last modified by. Okay, the question is, I want to set it up as two years before. The question is, how can I do that? Or is it even possible? So in general, it's not possible, but there is one place where you can, I mean, you can make some changes into it. Okay. So this is the only one thing which can be done by some other user except the admin. Okay. Admin cannot do this, but a normal or a different profile user can do it. Okay. So what I've done is to demonstrate the same, I have logged in inside the edge as this specific user that is user explorer user and the profile for this user. Let me go to profiles quickly is explorer user the name of yeah that's a sample server profile okay so this is the profile that i have created okay the first things first what you need to do is you need to go to user interface okay scroll down a little bit and here in the user interface you need to enable this set audit fields upon record creation and update records with inactive owners user permission okay so make sure first of all you need you need to check this specific checkbox next is then you need to go to that specific profile okay with which you want this created date uh, field to be edited or updated okay so just copy this permission that we have and you search it over here as well Okay, you will find that this checkbox is checked for this user, but you cannot check the same for the admin as well. Okay, so admin cannot do this for sure, but you can create a user or create a profile which will have this user, which will have this profile, like the user will have this profile and this checkbox by the profile level is been checked. Now user explorer user who has this specific profile samples or a profile has this checkbox checked and if this checkbox is checked, if you see user explorer user, explorer user, okay, his profile is say, uh, checked. Uh, that specific checkbox is checked in this what i'm doing is using apex i'm trying to create an account whose name is populated random text field is populated and one of the most important thing is created date is also populated and i'm setting it up as system dot now add years minus two so i'm keeping it two years before okay and as we know 23th october is the date so i've kept the, the date as 23 october interview okay so let's go ahead and debug and i've already called it so let's go ahead and call it Okay, so I think the record has been created. Let me debug it because I did debug the ID of the account ID, account ID that was created. Now, if you see account has been created and the most interesting part is that the created date is two years before. Okay, right now it's 8.22 a.m. in the morning and here I can see 8.22 a.m. but in 2023, not 2025. So last modified date is 2025, even though the created date is 2023. Okay, so this is how you can modify or update the created date by using the specific permission called as set audit fields upon record creation. You have to set it up by two ways. One of them is from user interface and another is from the profile of that specific user. So this was our first question. Let's move to our next question, which states that in an LWC component, I want to hide unwanted fields in the input box. How can I do that? Now, if I read this question properly, these fields are unwanted right now, but they can be wanted tomorrow or they can be wanted uh, like half hour after this. So how do we deal with this situation? I'm considering this situation. Okay. These fields are unwanted right now, but they want to be, they, there is a possibility that I might need these specific fields again. Okay. How can I solve this problem? Okay. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a custom setting or custom metadata. Okay. Or any one of them. And in that I'm going to create three specific field. One is object name. And second one is field name 
and finally uh, the checkbox called as hidden okay so for an example i want to hide accounts industry field let's consider this way okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use account object field name as industry and checkbox as hidden as true now once these three values are been set i will filter the data so of course we have something called as html and then we have javascript and then we have apex right so we have this data so while we get the data from apex to js i will filter the data over here okay from that metadata why that metadata i'm going to filter the data which will be coming from apex to js so this means the data will comply on this specific metadata that i've created so automatically account industry field will get hidden over here okay and in html what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a lwc input box and it has an attribute called as hidden okay that hidden attribute will be set as hidden as true or false based on the value that has been populated from the apex okay so in very simple terms i'm going to use a metadata which will filter the data to js and then we will set the values of the variables and then we will make the lwc input field as hidden or hidden as true or hidden as false based on the values if you have any other answer for this specific question you can surely comment down in the comment section but this is the answer that i'm proposing for now okay you can surely answer or pro propose any other answer for the same question as well let's move to the next question that how to call flow from lwc now this is a very simple question and very easy question okay so if you want to do that what you need to do is you, we have something called a lightning flow in lwc itself okay you have something called as lightning flow and please make sure that you cannot call screen flows or record trigger flow from the uh, lwc you can only call auto launch flow okay auto launch flow i'm just writing auto but yeah you can only call auto launch flow from the lwc itself okay so you cannot call any other flow that you want you have to specify the api name of the flow here okay whatever the api name is and then you have to also specify the input variables okay if there are any input variables like you want to pass some object name or anything anything okay you can surely do it okay and you can also do handle next action okay i'm not sure exactly uh, the names but yeah api name of the flow uh, the input variables that you have to pass and once the execution of this flow has been happened what do you want to do okay so you can specify all these things but in very simple terms if you want to call a flow from lwc you can surely go in this direction Okay, let's move on to our next question, which states that which deployment tool have you worked on? Now again, it's a very subjective questions. If you you guys have used Workbench, talk about Workbench. I have used Git. I have used uh, I have used uh, what we can say Jenkins and Bitbucket. I have also used uh, Azure DevOps. So I have used multiple tools. So answer will be very subjective over here. So I'm not going to answer on this one. But yeah, whichever tools you have specified. Uh, tell them and tell the whole process that you follow over there okay so they don't ask you questions outside that okay so when they talk about deployment tools just tell them every process that you do like okay we use uh, let's say we use azure devops so first we raise a pr and once that pr has been reviewed by the manager then it's get approved by some Q, uh, manager itself and then once it is done we mark it as completed then it gets merged and vice versa okay so tell the whole process so even if he asks any questions he will ask it within that process itself he won't go outside that because he knows that okay these are the tools that you have used okay so it will reduce the risk for deployment at least let's move on to our next question which states that what is async apex now this is again a very very simple question like what exactly an asynchronous apex is asynchronous apex is nothing but which executes asynchronously okay in simple terms right now maybe you're watching this video but at the back of your mind something might be going on like you want to wash plates or you want to do anything right you want to do yoga or anything anything that's in your mind okay so you will do it whenever you have time okay so that's an asynchronous right asynchronous means you will do that thing like that is in your mind but you are going to do it when you have time that's asynchronous apex okay and that's the same with asynchronous apex if some task has been provided which has large amount of data and does not need to be processed immediately you can give it to asynchronous apex because asynchronous apex will do it whenever it has resources and time 
so it will save some time for you and i mean it will do the execution late but it will do the execution for larger amount of data let's move on to our next question again what is the difference between batch and future again it's a very simple question uh, batch is an interface okay uh, future is a method right uh, it has start execute and finish method uh, but on the other hand future itself is a method uh, chaining is possible i'm just going to give 2 3 uh, chaining not possible and uh, uh, provides job id does not provide job id and there are many okay so i think so you can at least answer four or five at the glance then it's more than enough okay so even if you are going to different provide any differences in any of the topic just give four or five and that's i think so more than enough okay they know that you know the topic properly okay so yeah this is the difference between batch and future that i can come up with of course there are more i have not specified it but yeah this can be i think so for now that will be more than enough okay let's move on to our next question which states that explain decorators in lwc where to use connected callback now if you have been part of my classes where i take i teach interview i really take decorators and connected callbacks in very very deep okay and very deep so you can answer any and every type of the question because this is a must question okay so decorators there are three decorators as we already know at the red api at the red wire and at the red track okay it makes the property private and reactive uh wire is used to pull the data from apex and api is used to make property as public and reactive right so these are decorators in lwc where to use connected callback if you want to bring all the data once all the data together that's where you go with connected callback okay so this is one of the place where you use connected callback okay so let's move on to our next question that says that how do you do the communication between two unrelated components so if two components are not related to each other okay in that case is how can we do the communication so in that case we can surely go with lms lightning messaging services but there is a limitation limitation is that both components should be on same page okay so if you have a, a lwc component if this is this should be side by side or at least on the one page okay so let's consider this as the whole lwc component this component should be side by side or within the same page itself only then lms works else lms do not work okay so lms is lms has a limitation that the component should be on the same page itself Let's move on to our next question. We said that how can I view a record without using Apex? Okay, if you want to view a record in uh, without using Apex in LWC, there is something called as a record view form. Okay, there is something called as record view form. It's very very similar to record edit form, where you specify the object name, you provide the record ID and other details like uh, no no need of fields, but yeah, you specify the input fields that you want to show. and you specify the object name record id record type id and all those details okay so it's very very similar to that of a record edit form okay now before moving to our last question if you have any of the upcoming interview and you don't feel confident enough then you can have one to one mock interview with me by clicking on the top mid link below okay so let's get to the last question which says that how to overcome a mixed html operation error now this usually error comes up when you are going to make an update on setup and non setup object okay setup object is nothing but user profile user okay i will say non setup object for now is let's say account so in one transaction itself you make an update to user and account itself you get a mixed dml error now you can fix this using at the rate future method or you can also uh, fix it using qable apex okay so there are two ways you can fix it one is using future method and another one is using qable apex so this was all the questions that i had to cover in this specific video if you found this video helpful i request you to please like this video and do subscribe to my channel